Oh dear, this is the big one. Ransomware strikes again, and this time they've hit an Apple supplier, Quanta Computer, possibly one of the largest ransom demands ever at 50 million US dollars. As usual, we're going to take a look at the threat involved, do a live analysis, show you what it looks like on a virtual machine, discuss all the unique characteristics of this threat and how you can protect yourself. This is Leo and you are watching the PC Security Channel. This video is brought to you by Unstoppable Domains. Watch the end of this video to hear about some crucial developments in the crypto domain space and check them out using the link in the description. So to start things off, I want to talk a little bit about this specific incident. This particular attack was carried out by the R Evil group or the Revel group who propagate a ransomware as a service model. They started off with a beta and since then they've moved on to versions 1, 1.01, 1.02, all the way to 1.07. Now, the interesting behavior of this threat is it's not only an encryptor, but also an info stealer. And we're seeing this with a lot of new threats. They're not happy to just encrypt your data, ask you for ransom, because in that case, if you've just been smart with your backups, you can avoid paying the ransom. Now what they do is before they encrypt the data, they manage to steal it as well, send it to their command and control servers, and then use the data as leverage. From a financial perspective, it's great for the attackers because even if the victims don't pay the ransom, they can potentially sell the data, especially if it's a major company that's being targeted. In this case, what they stole or what they claim to have stolen are blueprints and schematics for proprietary Apple systems. Now, Lewis Rossman made a video about it, and as you know, Apple are quite sensitive about their schematics. They don't want anybody else to have it. I'm a big supporter of right to repair, so I don't necessarily agree with that. But given Apple's stance on this, I'm sure the ransomware developers were expecting that there'd be a lot of pressure on the supplier to make sure these aren't leaked. Now, some of them have been posted on the website as proof, and the threat follows that we will release or sell everything if you do not comply. So here's the ransom note that was received by Quanta Computer. As you can see, it's a pretty clean looking ransom note as far as ransomware goes. As usual, it says your documents, photos, etc. are encrypted. It has the running timer for six days and apparently the price doubles after that time. Now, just so you're aware, if you're not in the space, Almost in every case, there are extended negotiations with the ransomware authors, even in the cases where ransom is paid. So these prices are just there, but the final price is usually somewhere between what the negotiators want and what the cyber criminals want. And I'll talk a little bit more about this attack because it's quite elaborate. A lot of companies in the IT space have recently been affected with exchange server exploits. So if you're running an exchange server or that entire Microsoft ecosystem, be wary because apparently there are multiple zero days that were used to infiltrate the systems. As you can see over here, it also says that you have three hours left to contact us for a dialogue after which you can forget about discounts and keeping this confidential. Drawings of all Apple devices and all personal data of employees and customers will be published with subsequent sale. So now let's hop into our VM and take a look at this threat. We'll go ahead and open Process Explorer just so we can see it in action. As you can see, we've got the sample on the desktop. Now we're just going to run it. It does seem to require admin privileges. I'm not fully aware of the state of access that these attackers had to these systems, but we're going to go ahead and allow this. And immediately it opens up a command prompt window, starts its locking, deletes shadow copies, starts the encryption process. So it has an elaborate debug and locking mechanism. As you can see, it's running conhost.exe. And already at this point, our files are encrypted. Same thing with our pictures. And every folder has this uh, little text readme. I'm not sure if this is the exact variant that was used in the attack, but this is the latest version of the R Evil ransomware. Of course, with a lot of these targeted attacks, the uh, samples that are used are quite unique. And now it changes the desktop background as well. It says all of your files are encrypted. Find this uh, text file and follow instructions. As you saw during the entire process, there wasn't really anything hidden about it. It was an open window. It was debugging the whole time. So these threats are designed to be deployed on systems that have already been hacked to some extent, or they're using a remote code execution vulnerability. 
breaking in and then deploying the threat. It even leaves the debug log on the system, so I'm sure they can provide customer support if you run into any issues, haha. <laughs> We're also going to put this file into PE Studio and see what it has to say. Only two indicators, detected by 47 engines on first total, and there's a blacklisted section name. There's the first total results for you, and we can also take a look at the sections. So yeah, this one does look kind of unique. In terms of libraries, not much you could really bank on here in terms of imports. If we look at the strings themselves, not a lot that obviously stands out. Let's see if we can find the ransom node or anything. Nope, I don't think so. So there is the uh, manual UAC bypass. Uh, this is probably part of the logging, then the delete shadow copy. So these are two things that you can probably grab from here. And then it does have a debug path. So we're also going to take a look at this in Vars Total Intelligence. It does match some of the previous YAR rules written for the sample. So it does set up some services and auto start locations. There are a lot of domains in the network infrastructure. And there's also the UDP traffic. It uses some of the typical runtime modules, MPR DLL, Crypt32 DLL. Now, if we take a look at the graph, as you can see, this one is quite elaborate, contacts a lot of IPs. It's got a lot of similar files, the entire um, are evil ransomware as service variants. And as mentioned, it has a lot of domains embedded, contacts a lot of URLs that are known as malicious. So it is a very elaborate threat, as you can see. So what can you do about this? How would you prevent an attack like this? And unfortunately, there's no real easy answer to this. Usually, I would say back up your data. But in this case, protection is really important. And that applies both to your system in terms of having good intrusion prevention, detection technology, and uh, behavioral blocking, but also a good firewall. Because as you can see, the main aspect of a lot of modern ransomware is the info stealer part, where it takes your data, transfers it to their servers, and then uses that as leverage. So if you have sensitive data on your system, make sure that those kinds of outbound connections are well monitored. If you'd like to test your own defenses or find out how susceptible you could be to attacks like this, we do offer a lot of consulting and testing in these areas, so feel free to reach out at the pcsecuritychannel.com. Don't forget to like and share the video because I'm pretty sure this non an isolated attack. As mentioned, there are a lot of Microsoft Exchange related compromises going on right now. So it's absolutely imperative that you secure your systems and make sure you're not the next on the target list. Now I've been following developments in the crypto space lately and unstoppable domains is definitely one of the big ones. Now typically, if you want to have a website on the internet, you need to register a domain name. That is something you need to renew every year. So if your domain costs $20, you pay $20 every year until the end of time if you want to keep owning the website. Crypto domains are not like that. They are decentralized and you can own them forever. So let's say we wanted to set up a domain for the PC security channel. We can go ahead and search on unstoppable domains and we can get the PC security crypto for 40 bucks or the PC security channel.zil for 20 bucks. There are no renewal fees, meaning that this is a one time investment. Once you buy the domain, you will own it forever. One of the things that has held back the adoption of crypto domains is the ease of use aspect, because you can navigate to these websites as you do normal websites, but that is going away since Opera now allows navigation to crypto domains just like any other website. I'm just gonna type in a crypto domain here. And as you can see, here's the website. This is an NFT gallery. I'm sure you've heard some of the hype surrounding NFTs as well. And it's that simple. You can navigate to any crypto domain using Opera, vanilla edition, no extensions, no additional software required. You can do this on your PC, on your mobile devices. So if you're waiting to get started in the space, it's a great time to jump in. Check out Unstoppable Domains using the link in the description. As mentioned, you'll be able to register your website with a one-time fee and navigation will be as simple as I just showed you using Opera. A big thank you to Unstoppable Domains for sponsoring this video and keeping us up to date with the crypto domain space. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.